Hey guys, welcome back to another lecture video for Chem 104. Uh, this lecture video is going to be a continuation of our discussion um, of going from a linear structure of a carbohydrate to a cyclic structure of a carbohydrate, um, specifically the Haworth structure of that cyclic carbohydrate. All right, and so in the previous lecture video, um, I showed you guys this detailed mechanism of how to go from the Fischer projection to the Haworth projection. So we're going from the Fischer projection to the Haworth projection. Uh, there was just a lot of moving pieces that was involved, a lot of um, arrows uh, describing how the electrons are moving, um, a lot of rearrangement of the hydrogens. And so what I want to demonstrate in this in this video is how to create your Haworth structure um, by keeping some very, very key points in mind. And so let's go ahead and start. Uh, so the first thing that you guys need to do is you guys need to identify two items. One, where is your carbonyl carbon? Because that will become your anomeric carbon. Number two, where is your last chiral carbon? Because okay. the hydroxyl group on the last chiral carbon is going to serve as uh, the oxygen in that hydroxyl group is going to serve as one of the, the vertices in your ring. Okay. So I'll write that down. One, identify your um, carbonyl carbon, whether it's going to be your aldehyde or ketone. And number two, where is your last chiral carbon? The reason why is because the oxygen in the hydroxyl group of that last chiral carbon is going to be the oxygen in the ring. All right, and so once you guys have those two uh, reference point, then everything else just kind of um, falls into its place. So I'm gonna go ahead and shift colors here. Um, <clears throat> so looking at the structure, I'm looking for either an aldehyde or a ketone. I know that hydroxyl groups um, are present, that is a functional group, but um, if you guys recall, carbohydrates come in two flavors either an aldose or a ketose. In this case, since I see CHO, CHO is going to be an aldehyde, and therefore I've now identified where my carbonyl carbon is. This is going to be my carbonyl carbon. Okay. And so remember that your carbonyl carbon is eventually going to become your anomeric carbon. And depending on how the alcohol um, is going to be placed, whether it's gonna be at the bottom of the ring or the top of the ring, that's going to uh, dictate whether or not you're representing an alpha conformation or a beta conformation of that um, cyclic carbohydrate. All right, and so uh, since I've, I've identified my carbonyl carbon, I'm going to say that's carbon number one. Now, next I need to identify my last chiral carbon. And so if you recall from the Fischer projection, um, if we represent everything as, a, if none of these carbons kind of existed, and if the intersection of the vertical and the horizontal line represents the chiral carbons, then that is informing me that my last chiral carbon is down here. Okay. And it's super important for us to identify where our last chiral carbon is because the 
oxygen in this hydroxyl group is going to serve as one of the vertices. or one of the points or corners, let's just say corner, of the ring. Okay. And so now that I've, I've um, identified my, uh, excuse me, so now that I've identified my reference points, I'm just gonna go ahead and determine the number of uh, corners or vertices or points that's going to be in my ring. And I'm going to start from my carbonyl carbon. So this is going to be one. And then I'm going to work downward all the way till I hit oxygen. So one, two, three, four, five, and finally six. And so it turns out that I will have six points or six corners or six vertices in my cyclic ring. And so if I have six uh, corners in my ring, that's going to be a hexagon. And so what I'm going to do is I'm now going to draw a hexagon in which my oxygen is going to represent one corner of the ring. All right, um, and so the carbon to the right of that oxygen is going to be my anomeric carbon. Now, if you guys are asking yourself, okay, well, why did you draw uh, this, you know, covalent bond? Um, between oxygen and that anomeric carbon. If you guys recall from the proof or the mechanism that I showed you in the um, previous uh, lecture slide, this oxygen is going to form a covalent bond with the anomeric carbon, which is observed in this mechanism right here. Okay. And so you get your, your cyclic ring is basically everything that's, that you guys see on this, uh, uh, everything that's highlighted in green. And so everything that's highlighted in green um, are all of the participants that, um, are all of the, the substances that will participate in that ring. All right, so Now that I've placed my anomeric carbon on this hexagon with an oxygen, I need to identify where my last chiral carbon is with respect to the oxygen. And so my last chiral carbon, which happens to be carbon number five, is going to be found on the left side of the oxygen. So this is going to be my last chiral carbon. If you recall from the previous lecture video, the achiral carbon that contains that um, OH so the achiral carbon that is on the last chiral carbon, which happens to be uh, carbon number five, is going to always point up. So here is CH2OH, and that is going to be my achiral carbon. Okay. And so if you look at the fifth, um, let me erase some stuff here. If you guys look at 
you know, carbon number five, it's attached to this, you know, a chiral carbon, which I've now placed on my ring. Um, it's attached to this hydroxyl group or this oxygen. And that's also present here. I've represented that. Um, and lastly, it's connected to this hydrogen. And so if my a chiral carbon is pointing up, then that hydrogen that's to the left of the carbon is going to point down. Okay. Now, if you recall from uh, the mechanism, this hydrogen here is going to be transferred to this oxygen, creating that hydroxyl group, in um, which which will produce your your hemiacetal, and that carbon, that carbonyl carbon now becomes the anomeric carbon. Okay. All right, so um, now that I have carbon number five, all of the pieces in carbon number five fully drawn, um, I'm gonna go ahead and draw my anomeric carbon. So let's just say in the problem, I want you guys to draw the alpha conformation. And so if you guys recall, the alpha conformation represents a hydroxyl group that's going to be pointing down. So this hydrogen originally came from the hydrogen on the hydroxyl group that's found on the last chiral carbon. Okay. All right. And so that basically basically leaves us with um, everything else to fill in. And so if my hydroxyl group is pointing down because I want the alpha conformation, then that means that the hydrogen is going to point up. Okay. And if you want to draw those two lone pairs on the oxygen, you guys very well can to represent that, that the oxygen is following the octet rule. Um, and so... Going clockwise, this is going to be carbon number two. And so on carbon number two, I have an OH and an H. And so if you guys recall, um, let me just move. If you guys recall, the very first step is asking you guys to uh, rotate this molecule clockwise so that uh, carbons two, three, and four, everything to the right is going to be pointing down, right? And so going back to what we're doing, carbon th two, three, four, this hydrogen, this hydrogen, and this OH, maybe I'll go ahead and re just, just redraw it in a different color. Um, so uh, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, this hydrogen, this hydrogen, and this OH is going to point down. So you always want to set up your, your carbonyl, your anomeric carbon first, and your um, last chiral carbon to make sure that its, its position on the ring is all correct. And so the only thing that you guys have left to do is to make sure that the other carbons, whatever is to the right of it, is going to point down in the ring. So for carbon number two, I'll have a hydrogen pointing down. On carbon number three, I'll have a hydrogen pointing down. On carbon number four, I'll have a hydroxyl group pointing down. Okay. So notice that everything here kind of matches what I've placed over here. And so that tells you that everything here uh, everything to the left on carbon two, three, and four um, is what's going to go on top. So on carbon number two, we have this OH. On carbon three, we have another OH pointing up. And carbon number four, we have a hydrogen pointing up. And so um, this is our Haworth structure. The only thing that we need to do is to showcase the uh, that bold line. So I'm going to make this a little darker, more, much more bolder. 
to demonstrate that this is the edge that we're directly looking at with respect to the ring. Okay. So it's pretty um, simple. It's, it's a little bit different than the mechanism that I showed you guys in the lecture video, in the previous lecture video. Uh, the reason why I went through those slides is to um, make you guys understand how the aldehyde became an alcohol. Um, and it was just like the, the, the movement of these, these electrons forming new covalent bonds and breaking old covalent bonds. Um, and the, the list continues. I don't really expect you guys to be able to draw the mechanism um, to create the hemiacetal, just as long as you guys know that your aldehyde or ketone will be converted into an alcohol on your anomeric carbon. Um, that should be good enough. All right, so if this is the beta, I'm sorry, if this is the alpha form, what does the beta form look like? Well, the beta is going to be exactly like this. So I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate it. Oops. I'll just stick it over here. Uh, maybe not. So um, if I wanted to represent a beta, uh, what is this, mannose, a beta D mannose, <clears throat> then I'm going to make sure that my hydroxyl group on my anomeric carbon which used to be my carbonyl carbon is pointing up. And this would be the beta conformation. Okay. And so notice that everything stays the same except for the position of the hydroxyl group on the anomeric carbon. All right. And so this is um, an example of how you guys uh, uh, can draw very quickly your, your Haworth structure from your um, uh, Fisher projection. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to repeat the same process. Um, however, we're going to do it for a five carbon um, chain. And so if, I'm just gonna arbitrarily count here. So I have one, two, three, four, five carbons. And so what would your um, Haworth structure look like for a five carbon carbohydrate? Okay, so let's go ahead and end Go back to step number one. Step number one, we have to uh, identify where our carbonyl carbon is located. And so um, it turns out that this is our aldehyde and this is going to be our carbonyl carbon. And so this is going to be carbon number one. And so that's one of our reference points. Um, the second refer reference point that we need to identify is the last chiral carbon. So the last chiral carbon is going to be found right here. Okay. And so this carbon is achiral. And so this piece is always going to point up. in our um, <clears throat> Haworth structure. And the reason why we need to identify our last chiral carbon is because the oxygen is that it's bonded to, it's going to be responsible for connecting this, this linear structure into a ring form. And this hydrogen is eventually going to be transferred to this oxygen, creating our alcohol. All right, and so now that we have our reference point, we're, let's go ahead and start numbering this. Um, and so we know how many vertices or points or corners we have in our cyclic compound. So this is carbon one, two, 
3, 4, and 5. So remember, the connection is going to go from 5 back to 1. Okay? And so it turns out we have a 5 carbon, uh, or not so much carbon. So we have um, a Haworth structure that has 5 vertices. And so if you, have a, if you have 5 vertices, what shape do you get? Okay. And so if you had said a pentagon, then that is correct. Now, um, when you guys have a five carbon, or I'm sorry, a five, um, if you guys have a pentagon, then oxygen, uh, the oxygen is going to be placed on the top part of that pentagon. Always and always. And so that means that the carbon to the right of that oxygen is going to represent your anomeric carbon. And the carbon on the left is going to represent your last chiral carbon. And so now that I have those reference points, um, I need to correctly draw all of my uh, covalent bonds for my last chiral carbon correctly. And so on the last chiral carbon, carbon number four, notice that it's bonded to this uh, oxygen, which is this guy right here. So that's, that's kind of done and taken care of. Notice that carbon for the last chiral carbon, it's bonded to this CH2OH. And the CH2OH is always going to point up on the ring. And so I'm going to draw something that's pointing up, and I'm going to put CH2OH. And that's done. Um, and so the only thing that I haven't represented is this hydrogen that's still covalently bond bonded to carbon-4. And so the only position that's left or that's available is um, the bond going down. And so this bond right here is this bond that I highlighted in green. So um, that fourth bond has already been taken into consideration. So it's, a, it's something that we don't have to think about. We just need to worry, we just need to figure out where we're putting this CH2OH and we're, where we're putting this hydrogen. Uh, this oxygen is always going to be part of the ring. All right, and so let's just say that I wanted um, an alpha version of this D-arabinose. So that's the name of the sugar. If I wanted the alpha conformation, then that's going to tell me that my um, hydroxyl group, so the, the, this aldehyde, is going to become um, an OH after the reaction has occurred. And so that OH is going to be at the bottom for the alpha conformation. And notice that the aldehyde has that hydrogen and that hydrogen must go opposite to where that, uh, uh, that oxygen or that uh, hydroxyl group is located. All right, so that basically means I have to now figure out where the hydrogen and the OH is going to be located for carbon number two and carbon number three. Um, oops. And so if you guys recall, let me erase this as well. If you guys recall this hydrogen and this OH, since it's found on the right-hand side, um, these guys are always going to point down. And so on carbon number two, 
So this is carbon number one. This is carbon number four. This, so this must be carbon number two. My hydrogen is going to point down. And on carbon three, my OH is going to point down. Okay. So once again, this guy is right here. This guy is right here. So what's going to point up on carbon 2 is an OH, and what's going to point up on carbon 3 is a hydrogen. Okay. So H, OH. And that's pretty much it. Okay. So um, the, I guess the only thing that's left to do is to bold to bold in my lines to represent that we're looking at the edge of that cyclic ring. Yeah. All right, and so really doing all of this is just, uh, it's, it's um, I personally feel like it's simple, but it's easy to make mistakes. Uh, and the mistakes are going to come from setting up your reference points. So it's very, very um, important for you guys to identify your reference point. Where is your last chiral carbon? Where is your carbonyl carbon? Where is the hydroxyl group that's on the last chiral carbon? Where is your achiral carbon? Where is uh, all this? Where is all that, right? Uh, but once you guys have determined where they're going to be located, then everything else is pretty much a breeze. All right, and so um, if I wanted to draw the beta version of this molecule, I'm just going to basically copy this, this compound. I'm going to duplicate it. Everything stays the same. The only thing that changes for beta is the position of the hydroxyl group and the hydrogen on the anomeric carbon. And so for beta, I want my OH to point up and my hydrogen to point down. So remember that your anomeric carbon used to be your carbonyl carbon. And because your carbonyl carbon is trigonal planar, it was flat to start with, but when it was attacked by the oxygen, when, the, when this oxygen donated its electrons to form this covalent bond, it forced this hydrogen and this OH to adopt to a specific conformation, either go up or go down. Okay. All right. <clears throat> and so um, these are two examples on how you guys will draw the Hallward structure for a five carbon um, carbohydrate and a six carbon carbohydrate. So the last thing that we're going to learn how to do is draw um, Haworth structures from Fisher projections for ketones. Okay, um, and so the the mechanism is very similar to that of the aldehydes, and I covered that in great detail in the previous uh, lecture video. But once again, um, the lone pair on the hydroxyl group that's found on the last chiral carbon is going to um, bond with the carbonyl carbon forming this red line, this covalent bond. And then after some rearrangement, so for example, this hydrogen is going to eventually end up on this oxygen forming an alcohol. Um, then we'll get you know a structure that looks like this, for instance. Okay. Um, and so it turns out that this is the structure for fructose. Right. So you guys have heard of high fructose corn syrup. Um, so fructose is in its name. Um, and so basically, it's just concentrated uh, fructose molecules. I think it's modified. I can't remember. Anyways, um, let's go ahead and go over two examples on uh, how to draw ketoses and we'll we'll look at the the five carbon form and the six carbon form okay. so very similar to um, your aldehydes 
your first step is to identify your carbonyl carbon. And I'll do this in pink, sure, why not? And so looking at the structure, this is my carbonyl carbon. So that lets me know that this carbon is going to be carbon number one. Okay. So be very careful, this is a ketone. Um, so ketone are, uh, are functional groups in which the carbonyl carbon is found embedded in between two carbons. Okay. And so unlike aldehydes, your ketone is going to be in the middle. All right, so this is going to be carbon number one. That's going to be my carbonyl carbon, which will later become my anomeric carbon. And the last thing, the next thing I need to do is identify my last chiral carbon. And so my, uh, the CH2OH is, is, is kind of like a, it's almost like a reference point, it's a dead giveaway. But my last chiral carbon is going to be the carbon before the CH2OH. And so that lets me know that it is this oxygen on the last chiral carbon that's going to attack this carbonyl carbon forming my ring. And so I want to identify how many like vertices I'll have on my ring um, starting from the carbonyl carbon. So this is carbon number one, this is carbon number two, carbon number three, carbon number four, and then this is going to be the fifth point. So it looks like I have a five-membered ring. Okay. So if you have a five-membered ring, uh, what, will, what shape are we going to draw? Okay, so it's a pentagon. And so with a pentagon, just like what you guys just saw in the previous example, um, the top part of the pentagon will always going, is always going to represent the oxygen that was in the that was the hydroxyl group in the last chiral carbon. And so now that I've kind of drawn my base for my Hogwarts structure, everything to the right is going to be my anomeric. Um, and so um, I know that this is going to be converted into an OH. Yeah. So let's not focus on, on where the OH is placed for now. Um, let's go ahead and look at the carbon on the left. So this is carbon number one to match this carbon number one over here. Um, and so the left of that oxygen is going to be carbon number four. So I'll label this as carbon number four. And so this bond right here to the oxygen has already been placed. And so I don't need to worry myself about that. So this bond right here between carbon three and carbon four has already been placed right here. So this is carbon three and carbon four. So that's done. And so here I have a bond between the carbon and this um, achiral uh, carbon with the OH. And so remember that this is always gonna point up. And so that guy is going to be at the top. So I'm gonna put in CH2. O H. So basically I'm just writing it backwards. You guys can write it backwards, forwards, doesn't really matter, just as long as it's CH2OH. Okay. All right, so that kind of checks that guy off. And the last thing is the hydrogen that's on that fourth carbon. And so the only position that's available is going down. Okay. 
so now that I've placed my last item on the last chiral carbon, um, now I can go ahead and worry about my anomeric carbon. So let's just say that I want the beta form first. So remember that the um, oxygen, this carbonyl oxygen, is eventually going to become um, our alcohol uh, when it cyclizes. And the mechanism can be reviewed in the previous lecture video. So since, oops, since I want the beta form, that OH is going to go at the top. Now, if you guys look, notice that it's not hydrogen that's bonded to this carbon. It's another CH2OH. And so that CH2OH is going to point downwards because that's the only position that's left on this Haworth structure. Okay. And so here in this case, the CH2OH is this piece right here. Okay, not this piece. Um, so now that I have beta, I am done with carbon number one. So that leaves me with that leaves me to figure out what what to what to do with carbon number two and carbon number three. And so for carbon number two, um, I want you guys to notice that the hydrogen and this hydroxyl on two and three. Um, is found on the right side, so therefore that's it's it's going to be placed at the very bottom um, on that ring. And so on carbon two, we have a hydrogen at the bottom, and carbon three we have an OH. Oops. And so here I have an OH on carbon two that's going to go to the top and a hydrogen that's going to go to the top for carbon-3. And after you guys have made these lines a little bit bolder to represent that we're looking at that edge first, then you guys are done. Okay. And so this is going to be um, our uh, Haworth structure for this specific ketose. And so if I wanted to draw the alpha form, everything would stay the same except for the position of the CH2OH and the OH on the anomeric carbon. So this would be CH2OH is at the top because um, alpha means that my OH is at the bottom. And I'm done. Okay. All right. So um, here, this is uh, D-tagatose. And what I want to do is I want to draw the Haworth structure for this following compound. Um, hopefully you guys uh, get the, um, the general rules, but I'll just go ahead and show my work one last time. It never, it never, never hurts to do it again. And so a uh, first step is placing my reference point. Okay. And so feel free to just like pause this video and just work on it on your own. And then just like fast forward to the very end and if you uh, kind of stumbled, feel free to play a certain part of this video. Um, just kind of like scan through to see what I did. All right, so first thing I want to do is identify where my carbonyl carbon is because that's going to be carbon number one. So it's right here. Next, it's going to, I need to identify my last chiral carbon, which is right here. And this oxygen is going to be used to form that. Um, it's going to be used to kind of cyclize this linear structure. And so overall, we have one, two, three, four, and five 
So we have five um, pieces, if you will, to form that ring. So this is a five-membered ring. And so five-membered ring will represent a pentagon in which the top part of the pentagon is always going to be the oxygen that came from the hydroxyl group on the last chiral carbon. And so to the right of that oxygen is going to be carbon number one, my anomeric. To the left of that oxygen, um, which is this guy right here, that's going to be carbon number four. Okay, so hopefully you guys kind of saw that action that I did. So um, this oxygen is this, it's um, bonded to that car to carbon number four. So that means that this CH2OH is going to point upwards. Okay. That means that this hydrogen is going to point downwards. That finishes up carbon number four. Um, for the anomeric carbon, let's just say I'll do beta first. doesn't matter. Um, and so if I want beta, then that means that this carbonyl oxygen is going to be converted into a hydroxyl group in the course of that chemical reaction. And so if I want beta, then that OH is going to point up. And everything um, that's still attached to that carbonyl carbon, which is now the anomeric carbon, carbon number one, um, that's going to point down. And so I'm done with carbon one, carbon four, now I need to figure out carbon two and carbon three. Notice on the right hand side, they're both hydrogens. And so everything at the bottom are hydrogens for carbon two and carbon three. Uh, here in this case, we have OHs at the top um, because they're found on the left hand side of carbon two and carbon three. Last thing I need to do is just kind of deepen my lines, make it much more bolder. And uh, I am done. So this is the Haworth structure of uh, D-tagatose, specifically the beta version. Now, if I wanted to draw the alpha, ver al alpha version, I'm going to duplicate this. We'll erase that, erase that, erase this. Everything stays the same. This is going to be alpha. Um, so therefore, I want my OH to be at the bottom and my CH2OH at the top. Okay. All right. So hopefully um, through these four examples, I know that this video is, is long again, um, you guys understand how to methodically draw your uh, Haworth structure from the Fisher projection. Okay. So that's pretty much it for this lecture video. Um, we're going to move on to the next topic, uh, which is going to be reactions for carbohydrates. See you guys in the next lecture video.